Welcome back folks to a brand new video. So in this episode on Italy, I'll be focusing on some of the towns that you will be seeing next year in 2023 with more in-depth videos of these specific places. And the regions we'll be covering will be Tuscany, Umbria, Emilia-Romagna and the Lombardia. So if you've never been to Italy before, let's take a look at 12 beautiful towns to visit in Italy. Next up is Bergamo. With its hilltop medieval citadel encircled by Venetian walls, views of the snow-capped Alps, top-notch fine arts museum and some of the region's best restaurants, Bergamo is more than just a gateway to its starry neighbour Milan. This vibrant city has all the charm of a remote Tuscan town, but it's just 15 minutes drive from its own international airport. This is still an unsung destination. In the foothills of the Alps, this is a two-for-one city break experience, with the Cita Alta, the upper city, and the Cita Bassa, which is the lower city, offering dramatic contrasts. So with the medieval architecture and beautiful local cuisine and an authentic Italian town just a little off the beaten path, Bergamo is a stunning destination in northern Italy, worth a visit on any trip through the region. Next up, Ubino. A walled medieval city in Le Marche, Italy. And together with Pesaro, it's the capital of Pesaro and the Ubino province. Now this evocative hilltop village is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And it's easily one of the most important Renaissance sites in Italy. It's also another impressive example of Italian Renaissance architecture, which is the Palazzo Ducale, the main attraction of the town. Built in the 15th century, it was the Duke's main headquarters. So there are plenty more attractions just like this, for example, visiting Raffaello's houses. So if you're looking for a deeper cultural experience of Italy, then Urbino is a must see. Monte Bucciano. Standing high atop a hill in southern Tuscany, not too far from Siena, Monte Bucciano is a medieval town of rare beauty. Highly recommended when visiting Tuscany. The city is full of elegant Renaissance palaces, ancient churches, charming squares, and hidden corners. Monte Pulciano's strategic position makes it a perfect base from which to explore this beautiful corner of Tuscany. And from here you can reach the charming Pienza, the thermal village of Bagnio Vignone, and so many other enchanting villages in a very short space of time. Next on the list is Tivoli. Tivoli is a historic hill town in the Lazio region of Italy and is one of the most popular destinations for day trips from Rome. Tivoli's two most famous tourist attractions are the magnificent gardens of Via Desta and the extensive ruins of Hadrian's Villa. Now this ancient town is among the most popular travel destinations in Rome because of its nice atmosphere and its fine weather. 
you see the cool weather can be attributed to the town's location. It's built on a hill and is located at the river. The hill town is among the most coolest parts of Rome and a lot of locals and tourists love to visit the town of Tivoli, especially during summer, when the rest of Rome is experiencing the hot weather. So it's something to think about when you next visit Rome. Gubbio. In Umbria's northwestern reaches, Gubbio stands proud against the slopes of Mount Engino. The town is celebrated for its rich cultural heritage. You can notice the ruins of the first century Roman theatre as you approach. Wander the steep winding streets and you will, at some point, arrive at the central Piazza Grande and the Bell Tower. And it's from here you have the perfect panoramic views over Gubbio. Now if you want the best time, try to visit in the middle of May. Because this is the largest and most important festival in Umbria. Toddy. High on a hilltop above the winding Tiber, the pretty town of Toddy is like a cartoonish cutout in a child's pop-up book. Narrow cobbled streets meander slopingly, leading to the beautifully preserved medieval monuments. Search for the Palazzo del Popolo, built in 1213 one of Italy's oldest public buildings, and now at home among cafes and boutiques. Some say that it's strangely untouched by tourism. It's peaceful, presenting a slice of real Umbrian life. Don't forget to check out the local food, the slow-cooked pigeon flavoured with herbs. Next up is Vigivano. If you enjoy discovering Italian towns with lots of atmosphere, lots of Italians and few tourists, then number seven is for you. In fact, its main square is often referred to as one of the most beautiful and least known squares from the Italian Renaissance. The highlights here are the Piazza Ducale, and the Bramante Tower. At only 35 kilometers away, Bigivano makes a great day trip from Milan. You can hop on a train and you're there in 30 minutes. Spend most of the day and you're back in Milan for dinner. Italy is Europe's top producer of rice, and much of it comes from this area here around Bigivano. So obviously, Try the risotto. Milan. Italy's city of the future. A fast paced metropolis where money talks, creativity is a big business, and it's easily one of the fashion capitals of the world. Once ruled by Caesars and Napoleon, Milan has an ancient and fascinating history. But while it may not have the historic attractions of other Italian cities, it holds its own with art collections old and new. So once you do arrive in Milan, make sure to see some of the incredible pieces of art, such as the infamous Last Supper, which is housed at Santa Maria della Grazia. 
Obviously, take some time to see the iconic Milan Cathedral, the Galleria Vittorio, and the Royal Palace. Even after a few days of exploring, you can even pop over to Lake Como, which is only around 50 minutes from the center of Milan itself. You can even drive there, it's super easy. Which brings me on to the next destination. Bellagio. The trip to Lake Como is incomplete without a visit to its pearl, Bellagio, one of the most beautiful places in the region of Lombardy. Bellagio is located halfway between the two southernmost branches of the lake and is famous worldwide for its beautiful villas overlooking the water. The tiny streets of Bellagio are so simple and pretty that it's easy for you just to walk around. The old town centre of Bellagio has one main road, which is populated by dozens of shops and boutiques where you can find local food, clothing, perfumes, whatever you want, and so much more. So I highly recommend that obviously you do visit, wear comfortable shoes and just get ready to do a lot of walking of ups and downs, but I can assure you it's well worth the trip. Borgo a Mazzano. Only a short 30 minutes by car from the city of Lucca lies Borgo a Mazzano, a village in the Lucca province of Tuscany most famously known for its arch bridge, which is sometimes referred as the Devil's Bridge. But whatever its name may be, just marvel at how beautiful it really is, especially in that setting. So if you want to escape, this is a wonderful place to view. Varena. Most visitors to Lake Como spend their time in glamorous Bellagio, but I prefer tiny Varena. It's one of my favourite medieval towns in Italy. Positioned in the middle of the lake, Varena has colourful buildings small stony beach and the most delightful promenade along the lake shore. Here you can spend days wandering the streets in search of boutique finds and the best gelato. The mood is casual and you can pull up a cushion on a stone step and relax with your own ice cream. Varina has its own special villa which is open to visitors. Via Monastero, famous for its beautiful gardens and impressive views across the lake. And it's only between 6 to 8 euros, so it's definitely worth trying out. Next up is Shila a stunningly located fishing village in the Calabria region, in the south of Italy, right on the toe of Italy's boot. A rocky spur topped with an ancient fortress, separated by two narrow strips of seashore, hemmed in by steep hillsides. It's full of beautiful beaches, colourful terracotta towns and stunning landscapes but also known for its rich culinary heritage. So it's kind of hard to understand why Calabria doesn't really get as much attention 
welcome foreign visitors as its other Italian counterpart. But if you want to visit historical landmarks here, the Rufo Castle has breathtaking views and overlooks the beach. So whether you go with the entire family or a romantic escape for two, be sure to enjoy all that Sheila has to offer. So there you have it folks, those were a few of the towns that you may want to visit one day. And for more videos of other destinations, check out the description below and of course the playlist. And I will see you all on the next one.